three, two, one. Hey yo, what's up, y'all? Sounds good. What up? It's your boy John. It's your boy Raniel, aka Big Shy. My boy Tahoe Syrup on the gram. Coming to you live. We want to just make a quick shout out to everyone that followed up with the second episode. Yes, sir. Um, every time we ha- start this episode, we always start off with like a little weekend recap. Yeah. How was your weekend, my friend, my fam? Man, it was chill. It was chill. Um, we went out to the conservatory after work. I had Saint with me. We went to a friend's uh, birthday. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the gallery area opened up a new conservatory food hall. Um, ironically, in this in the uh, staple of Houston's youth, uh, out uh, night scene, I should say. Yeah. Uh, let them know where it's at, man. It is at the old Roxy <laughs> on West Alabama. That's right, man. The old stomping grounds for anybody that was um, underage and of age to spend their Tuesdays through, you know, their Fridays through Tuesday, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they, they've re- gutted it out, turned it into a brand new food hall. So if you're looking for somewhere to eat, man, that's definitely a dope spot to check out. They got two bars. Um, a, they serve you a side of nostalgia, man. When you walk in, you just yeah. like... Damn, everything is kind of pretty much where it used to be for the most part, except with the exception of now restaurants inside. Second floor, the stage. You know, the smoke, the lights. The stench. <laughs> Some of the uh, same people are still in there. No, just kidding. Yeah, they probably, bro, somebody might be in there and be like uh, reliving their, their yeah. core memories, just like working there. Definitely, man. <clears throat> what about you? How was your weekend, dog? The weekend was good. I had just, I think I texted you like midway through it. I was uh-huh. like, man, I'm ready to get out, bro. 312, Shh. just on that that, uh, nurse. that nurse doctor life. <laughs> it was like kind of tough, but at the same time, after Sunday, just you just push through, man. Yeah, I got you. That's how I feel usually on my Saturday. Yeah. I'm like, man, just push through because I'm going to have Sunday, Monday off, and then I'll be yeah, able to reset. Well, you, you do Tuesday to Saturday. Tuesday through Saturday, yeah. Saints man. Parlor, okay. Yeah, that's me. And then like most of the time when... uh. When you're going towards towards that like last set of like days, man, you, uh-huh. you kind of like mentally. I personally, I like reset my mind towards like it kind of refreshes because like when yeah. it gets, when you're getting to that midway through like second half, yeah. you kind of have to like. For me, I reset. Like okay. I have to like reset and be like, okay, it's a fresh week. Let uh-huh. me just have. Let me break these up in two sets type shit. Yeah, that's good, man. So you don't feel overwhelmed with like the load of just straight yeah. up the week. Yeah, I feel that. That's a good way to look at it, man. Um, pretty much, yeah. I mean, we got uh, some really good stuff for you guys. We definitely want to piggyback and um, make sure you guys check out episode one. Yeah, please do, guys. We uh, we had some funny stuff on there. It was kind of just like an intro episode, kind of give you a little insight to who we are and what we do. And as uh, our episodes get further along, you kind of develop a sense of our personalities each and kind of what works and kind of how we came about. Um, for those of you that are new to the channel, which we, I'm sure we're, we're gonna have a lot of new viewers, um, I have a I, I'm a barber, right? And then my boy over here, part time cook, full time plan operator. That's right. He uh, he moves them he moves them bricks literally. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so definitely catch that out. So um, catch up on that so you can kind of see how we segue into this episode, basically. Yeah. So I remember earlier you were like talking about like kind of refreshing where i worked at prior to uh even starting the podcast mm-hmm. like it was like it was a few restaurants that really kind of like build my background on why i do what i do uh-huh. and it was like um seaside poke which was like a manager on duty spot for me i was mm-hmm. like a the mod and then i would just go in the back and like start prepping and like i really enjoyed that shit man mm-hmm. like it just it it like ignit ignited a flame in me mm-hmm. and then like i was able to go to my first like professional kitchen yeah the poutine what was kind of like the cuisine was kind of all over the place mm-hmm. but like the lessons i learned pretty much gave me like it was like one of the biggest things was like passion with no intent can only get you so far because mm-hmm. like the passion was there but like my intent was kind of questionable because i was like still on the high of like damn i'm starting to cook for real yeah yeah but then like when i went to my next kitchen squabble that really was like a big change like mm-hmm. culture wise like cooking wise it was just completely different it was like very organized in a sense yeah. but it was like so it wasn't militant 
it, there wasn't a militant approach, but everyone mm -hmm. had like fucking five to ten years more experience yeah. than me. So it was, was more like, structured. It was more structured yeah. because everyone knew what they were doing for the most part. There was only like a couple green people in there. Yeah. Okay. And then after squabble, I would like hop, I hopped around some other kitchens and like uh, short stints here and there. But then like I found my way into ninety three yeah. in the Montrose area, and that was like freaking a blessing, bro. Like yeah. everything that I would want in a kitchen was there. It wasn't it, it wasn't even the big kitchen, but it was just like the team that I had or team I was around. Mm -hmm. It was just like. It was ideal for me, and it was like everyone was looking out for each other. Most of the time, like when you're in like some kitchens, like they always talk about like sabotage and shit. But yeah, most of the time it's not even sabotage. It's more so like negligence of your own project, and like expecting or making the assumption that someone's gonna be there to stir the pot for you, or like yeah, that's life, or like tell you, hey, <laughs> the timer went off on your project. Like where are you shit. at? Yeah. You know? Yeah, where you at? Or they won't even say shit. Yeah. I remember I was like roasting like roasting cherry tomatoes at this one job that uh -huh. I didn't even list because I was only there for like a couple weeks. I was like, bro, Damn. I fucking somebody pressed the timer without without even letting me know. And I was like, you fucking bitch, bro. Damn. I was kind of pissed. But then I was like, yo, it's just cherry tomatoes. Why, am I, why am I even tripping? But I get it, though. It's just kind of like, yo, you inconvenienced <clears throat> me without any yeah. kind of heads up. Right. Yeah. So now you're having to force yourself to perform at a rate that you're not necessarily like comfortable, or yeah. you know you're out of. You're like, damn it! It was what well, a set. It was a set and forget, anyways. But at the same yeah. time, it's like mm, the principle of like, yo, your Let timer me know. went off. Yeah. Damn. damn. Yeah, man. I think that that's like kind of the that that transcends over to like the barber world, bro. Like I've worked at mom and pop shops, independently owned. I've worked at the corporate places that are like they want to be mom and pop styled, but they have like crazy ass corporate background backgrounds and like you know what i mean they try to model their stuff to look like you know pretty much like a mom and pop shop yeah. and so the expectations are super different like how you were comparing the other job to the other one was like it had more structure obviously when i went to like the mom and pop places it was a, a little loose you know but um when i went to the corporate spots like yo you have to be doing this this way you gotta do you gotta you know what i mean provide yeah. your service in this order um, so I get it, man. Like a lot of that takes play into like your overall flow of you being the individual that's working for them and how you operate. Right? Yeah. It's like, damn, I got to switch it up because I can't move the same way, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I totally, that's crazy. I can see how that would work. It all depends also. Cause like in every situation you have to be teachable and moldable towards that yeah. kitchen. So you're kind of like, working out your your your, your, your like yeah. systematic approach for the kitchen itself or mm -hmm. like your cogs on how i can run and your habits right yeah and your habits like yeah. do i need to break away from these habits so i can do this efficiently yeah efficiently yeah. or yeah. is there a quicker Standard. yeah you're having these standards and it was yep. like one of the chefs that taught me or like i was working for was like never compromise your integrity as a chef dang but then when he told me that i was like bro you kind of not on that shit though <laughs> you're like yo practice what you preach yeah, man bro, when he said that shit i was like all right i'm out <laughs> i had to dip bro you're like nah man but that's cool i mean yeah. that's something you take with you right whatever you do yeah i think one of the tours like the more places i've been at and mm -hmm. i haven't been cooking for too long but mm -hmm. it's like you you find the structure for yourself that works in the kitchen that you're at mm -hmm. that's more um, a, a, like m that's more accepted. Mm -hmm. Like you just have to be able to work, have your standard, have yeah. your structure so that you can be independent in the kitchen. Cause sometimes you might be alone. You yeah. know what I mean? Just imagine running a one man shop, <sighs> no appointments, no walk. Like it's just straight walk-ins. Like, yeah, that's rough, man. I mean, <clears throat> I know guys do it. And for some people it works that way. But man, not having like an organized structure at the bare minimum to be like, hey, you were coming in at this time, you come in at this time, you end up with a shop of just random dudes that are sitting there waiting, right? Yeah. And you're just like, you start feeling pressured to yeah. to crank it out. So then, what happens? You know, your your quality goes down because you now you're not even pl you're playing against the clock. No, for real. You know what I mean? Because you're you're trying not to inconvenience people, and I get it. Like that's how majority of some places do run is no appointments. Yeah. And I've always wondered how that really felt because it's like, dang. Cause I know when I used to go to shops that were no, they're not appointment based. Like, no, we don't take appointments. It's like, 
you could be in that mug for an hour before yeah, they see least. you. Yeah, you know, and you're just like, damn. It could be that's one thing that could be preventable, but it's more so like it's all they know though. Yeah, yeah. it works for them. Yeah. Dude, I was talking to this lady who used to do hair and she was telling me she was working at them um three dollar joints, where three dollar fades, five dollars. Back in the day. Yes, bro. And she told me she would crank out ninety haircuts on a Saturday. Bro, ninety. I was just I was blown away. I was like, dude. But she was like, you have to understand though, at the same time, we weren't fading like we fade now, or you guys fade now as barbers. Like, yes, we blended, but it was like Tell me what you want on the sides, a little bit off the top. No shampoo, obviously, nothing. You just go yeah. like, for $3. But to be cranking them clippers for 90 heads on a Saturday, that's wild. I mean, you can compare that to being in a very busy restaurant yeah. where you're cook pushing out the same dishes, you know, because people want that. They're known for it, right? Yeah. Like the restaurant's like known for this style of food or whatever. And you're like, dog, I've cut a thousand of these radishes, bro. Like, yeah. And I've played it like, with all these arugula like 300 to 500 <laughs> covers yeah bro it's you wild can, man just man i remember like we would have a pre-shift meeting there would be like 300 400 covers <laughs> i'd be like i'd be like yo there's no downtime bro after the yeah. four o'clock you're on dude. dude i i can't imagine the type of stress and i believe it i'm a firm believer in the amount of stress that goes into being a, a chef a sous chef an assistant a helper a, a, a prepper a cook the dishwasher, the order taker. Like, I've, I've had a quick glimpse for, like, two years on food truck life, you know? Like, and that and alone, it was, like, cooking in a small food truck is, is wild. Yeah. But, like, to be high-paced in a restaurant that's known for, like, that's rough, man. Nah, the stress level, I don't know. Like, I know it'll make or break you, but, you know, yeah. That's wild. I feel like with, uh, with, with that... You have to be, like I said, you just have to be intentional about what you're doing mm-hmm. and getting mm-hmm. what you want and from just the do experience. It. Yeah, right. Just because a lot of times you'll see these like cold cut motherfuckers that just like they don't show any emotion when they're cooking, and it's almost like it works. You just got to be a robot yeah. sometimes. Yeah, they got a cigarette in the mouth. Yeah, and just damn. Whoop, 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 if I if I saw a cook smoking a cigarette, I'd be like, "Yo, I want this is where I want to eat." Yeah. Motherfucker got his palate all messed up, you know what I mean? Yeah, all the smoke and his. But he's just, efficient. Yeah. yeah, man, that's tight. So, um, what you got planned, man? So, was, was how's the uh, how's the rest of your week looking in terms of you know outside of work? Or, it's or, good, or man. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to go to Mexico City to find man. the wedding venue that's or wedding tight. the church place. Yeah. Uh, the place of worship to uh, go yeah. ahead and um, lock it in. Lock it in. We're yeah. gonna be there for a few days, and then like we'll go uh, to Act Ceremonia, which is like a little day festival. Yeah, or two day festival. But there's a few artists there that I really want to watch. You gotta watch episode one if you kind of want to know. But the artist that you dropped, I was like, that's pretty dope, man. Yeah, to, to be mean, able to, and coincidentally, you guys are there for yeah for that. That's tight. I mean, Kendrick is going to be there, bro. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be able to see him. I wanted uh-huh. to watch him and Samfa. Yeah. But it's just going to be like Peggy, mm-hmm. James Blake, a couple more artists. But it's going to be fine, man. And uh-huh. uh, I think like with with the trip, like I always enjoy my time in Mexico City. Mm-hmm. And then it's a matter of just like outside of work, it's good to just break free and like just get out your shell for a little bit. Because me, I kind of like contain myself me like too. when I... Mm-hmm. When I'm going about my like work weeks, and your shit. life, yeah, yeah, and and then like I always kind of question like why am I even like <laughs> holding off on what I really want to do? But then it's like there's always like this stipulations that come into play, like whether it be like time or excuses that I put on myself on why I'm not doing this. It's yeah. like a mental, a mental, battle. mental battle, bro. Dog, I'm telling you. Uh, shout out to all the homies and the, everybody that's. Yeah, in whoever, a mental battle of their whoever own, can right? Be so efficient with all their shit, like props yeah. to you, man. I'm, just, yeah. I, dude, whoever figure it out, whoever, which one of y'all figure it out, let us know. Get on the podcast and talk about it, bro. Yeah, please. man. I mean, whew, yeah, bro. Everybody got a little battle in them that they are waging and yeah. and, and dealing with. But anyways, man. Um, what else do you want to jump into, bro? I mean, know we got a gang some, and yeah, stuff. Let's that talk about I'm some, excited, man. Let's like, talk about some segments, man. Yeah. So, uh, 
as you guys know, John and I, we kind of jot down, we share notes and kind of like, plan. No, we don't plan out, but we just like, hey, let's talk about this at some point in any of the episodes, you know, so we got a little list of, uh, you know, random things, man, that, um, you know, we want to talk about. So let's see here, bro. Let's, let's you know, while we're, uh, we're jumping into like subjects of food matter and stuff like that. Um, I have I have a note here, bro. It says elevated Filipino food, and it pisses you off. Let's go ahead. Give me some reasons why elevated Filipino food <laughs> pisses you off, man. As a man who has a very eclectic palate and is like a supporter of his culture's food and all the surrounding cultures' food, man. Like, what annoys you? Let's just put it that. What annoys you so much about this elevated Filipino culture cuisine in the cuisine world? If any time I see you. Picking up some tweezers to plate, bro. <laughs> that shit is your shit. Might be a little bit more questionable than somebody that's <laughs> prepping with their hands, bro. Yeah. Like, a lot of the times in these um, Southeast Asian cuisines, mm-hmm. like that open up or like these establishments, like there's only a certain approach that you should be taking when it comes to your food, and it's like what you know and what the people know, and how do you appease both sides? Yeah. And like. When it comes to it, when it comes down to it, a lot of the times they'll have like their background in a specific cuisine, which can like mend into what they're doing with Filipino food, mm-hmm. which is very like, um, which is very, which is a very thin line because a lot of people are like, yo, this isn't Filipino. This is <laughs> the one I know. This is, but then you kind of have to highlight their experience and their past uh, yeah, knowledge from the like background, their background yeah, from their I feel old that. restaurants. It's kind of respectable, <laughs> but when you have to like over, uh, yeah, no, when you have to <laughs> over like um, explain on why your food is elevate, elevated or why you want to elevate that shit, yeah, yeah. it it kind of it's like, bro, and doesn't need elevation. You're like, this is a French food. <laughs> yeah, it's like you just you spotlight the cuisine for what it is. Uh-huh. Your take is your take. Respect it's and it, uh-huh. it can be respected, yeah. but in no re in no way should you have to say I gotta elevate this cuisine. There is nothing wrong with Filipino food. <laughs> the way it's more high yeah. cholesterol than anyone. <laughs> yeah. It's like the fil- it's like the soul food of Asia. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like gold flakes on my adobo. Nah, bro. <laughs> or like it's I I mean I'm a victim. I'm a I've definitely played the part of like elevated cuisine i made a dish one time and it was like a help for my sous chef it was like 72 hour braised or 72 hour Pork sous vide sh- uh <laughs> short rib with like a kade kade. it was almost kind of like a sous with like pickled banana uh damn y'all went in pickled banana uh blossoms with like only uh, picked at the yeah. finest time of the year for real that's march why first we, through 17th that's why we had that shit yeah and then I made a didn't go on dish. Did it slap? It was good. It slapped. But the thing is, if your cooks aren't on the same page uh-huh. and they're not plating it the way you want, uh-huh. or like there is, the intent that you put behind it was lost, yeah. lost in translation, yeah, yeah. then there's no reason to even put that out. I got you. Because it's not consistent with what you yeah. envision or what. I, that makes sense, man. I mean, yeah, I, I think that, yeah. The over glamorizing and the like, just the the OA right, yeah. the over the top like glamorization of the, the cuisine, whether it's Filipino food or whatever, kind of takes away from. Yeah, because a lot of the time people don't even know what Filipino is. Yeah, Filipino food is, but then like if your first bit to the cuisine is, hey, we're gonna elevate this. <laughs> It doesn't make sense because you don't even have these people that are familiar with the cuisine. Yeah, you're right. The baseline. Yeah, of what's their, your baseline? They're not, yeah, they don't even know. So now you're serving them like this. It's like, bro, that's cool, but we don't know what it tasted like without the gold flake, the yeah. 24 karat gold flakes. You no, know? straight up, bro. That's straight. That's, that's a I good mean, take, man. When it comes to food, though, like we always talked about the death row meal. What do you think your death row would be <laughs> if you were, uh, if it was your okay. last meal? What would it be? Dude. Last meal would probably be like I like I thought about man would be um the chicken katsu with like with curry. Like you Japanese. ever had Coco's curry? Yeah, it's in the Cal- in yeah, California. Yeah, so, yeah, bro, that shit's that's just that's good. Bro. So I would want that. I'd do it like an egg on the you know on top, man. I don't know, and then like ask the the warden or whatever if I could get like a slice of spam. 
on the side. Bro, they'll give it to you, bro. Yeah, I'm like, come on, man. Matter of fact, I'll talk to the warden for you. So when you go on death row, man, you yeah, that, man. man. I'll, I'll make sure to remember. <laughs> what about you? I mean, it would be kind of similar. You did katsu, so I'm I'm going to do that three-piece Jollibee, Ooh. double rice, gravy, <laughs> maybe pineapple juice, maybe some calamansi juice, bro. And a mango peach, a peach mango pie? Ube pie. Oh, ube. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. That would be it, man. And then, yeah. oh, yeah, I forgot to say hot and spicy, bro. Make it spicy. There you go, man. I like my chicken spicy, man. For real? Yeah. I only get my chick- chicken with the red flag on it. Ah, uh, a lot of red flags. That's the only red flag. Yeah, I need. All, my boys, I got one red flag and it's all my chicken, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, but for all my listeners, here's a random tidbit that I learned about my co host, John, man. He does not like cheese. Oh, I don't eat cheese, bro. Dude, that's wild. He can't it's a stand it. My whole He's life, just, man. Since he was a kid, just never been a fan of it. It grosses him out. He doesn't like the smell, the taste of it on his food. Which is kind of weird because I eat pizza, pizza. bro. Because, <laughs> like, pizza, in a sense, mozzarella, it's, it's like, it's so Blend. mild where yeah. you can't even taste it. It's more so like a texture thing. Yeah. But I remember moving to the States from Saudi, and then mm-hmm. I was like, bro, why the f- why does this burger taste weird? Dang. And in the first bite, I was like processing, and I just start like, just the thought of cheese makes me gag, bro. So Man. I can't even talk about it for too long. Dude. And maybe I'm being a baby or some shit, but. That's wild. I mean, I'm in the, I'm in the culinary world, so I kind of have to taste food with cheese. <laughs> so if somebody asks me. Is it hey, good? <laughs> take a bite. If somebody's telling me, uh. Hey, I need you to taste this uh, uh-huh. this freaking fondue, blah, 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 blah. I'll be like, bro, first off, I'm not going to taste this shit. Damn. And then sometimes I would have to make it. And then the chef would be like, John, make sure to do this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, first off, this isn't my project, motherfucker. I don't want to <laughs> do this anyways, bro. But you got to do what you got to do when you're in the kitchen, bro. You're like pretending. Yeah. You're I'm like, like, oh, oh it's wonderful. good. <laughs> wonderful. Amazing. Yeah. It's like when you're, uh, you're at a wine tasting and you're like spitting out the... You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. spitting out so you don't get too yeah. drunk. I'd be doing that when I'm tasting cheese. I'd be like, Pah. oh, amazing. Yeah. I love the notes of the, the mold. <laughs> yeah. Blue cheese? No. Nah. Maybe one on one of our episodes, man, we're going to have a cheese tasting. Oh, God. You know what? I'll tell you what I don't like. I don't like liver. I won't oh, eat man. liver. So if you take a piece of cheese, I will take a corner. Of, oh, never mind. I don't see. We should do it one time just to get the reaction, make it a real, make legitimate, it go, make it go like spot uh, viral, and yeah, then man. liver and it. cheese, bro. That's that's just not my thing. Hey, that's a good combo, bro. For everybody else but us. Yeah, <laughs> a liver burger with grilled cheese on both sides, wrapped in a show pal bun. <laughs> that's a no no. With grilled me. onions, bro, and an aioli. Yeah, man, I was thinking about like. Uh, in the sense to where, uh, you know, with cuisine, there's always a play in, like, your take and more so, like, uh, why you want to even be doing it. Yeah. And then, like, kind of segueing in that, like, how would you feel about, like, the concept of, like, food and streetwear in one, one place? Man. Like, kind of like how Kith serves, like, ice cream yeah. and desserts. I think it has a space. There's definitely a space for it. I think like having a full blown restaurant or like just say like burgers or something, it'd be a little difficult because of the um smell. the smell, I think. But if they did like clothing wrapped in like those bags, you know? Yeah. Oh true. You know, because like coffee shops exist that have like barber shops in the back. I have like, seen tattoo a, shops. Yeah. I've seen a store that my brother in law used to go to out in California where the shoe store was in the front and you would walk to the back and you would be inside of um, a barbershop. Yeah. So I think that uh, that space exists, man. But having like a full-on restaurant, man, would be a little tough. Yeah. You know? I mean, what's the name? Uh, Glass Cypress does it. Like they have like the omakase uh, concept inside. The omakase concept kind of works because mm-hmm. you don't even have to like cook food. You're just slicing fish. That's true. You could do that for sure. <clears throat> That's dope. I wouldn't have a barbershop in a. I would. I wish I could have a barbershop yeah, in a restaurant. Imagine the, f- hair the hair, hair to bro. The food, bro. Everybody would be like, "Why is there clippings of hair in my yeah. sh- in my cheese?" Oh, that's a special fam. What do you think about like uh, 2024 trends in like street we- streetwear right now? Um, I think it's going to take the last three years of quote unquote like street fashion, like cozy boy season. 
um, the reemergence of vintage wear of you know like past wear trends from the '90s, and then like work wear. I think it's yeah. big. Do you really do you like the uh, crop look that people are doing with their? Tops? I don't have a body for that shit. Yeah. I'm not even that gonna shit lie. looks good though. It's dope. I think it's great. I can't do it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like they they always wear like high high rise, waisted pants. Yeah, high waisted pants. And then they got a crop thing and then, you know, it works. Um, I just don't think that I it's not something for big dudes. Yeah, I'd be like, man, my, my gut would be out of Yeah, I, then you just look wild, bro. You're yeah. just like, yo, have a little more, you know. You picking up something, your butt crack <laughs> showing and shit. Yeah. Guilty dog, guilty. I'm not even like uh I was watch. I was. I just be listening to the Throwing Fits podcast sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, their approach is like super hot, bro. Like, I really like what they think about like mm-hmm. street wear, and they're very knowledgeable about what they yeah. talk about. I'm not even deep, deep. I just wear what I freaking like, bro. Yeah, I think exactly. that when you try to fit into like a specific genre, you overthink it, you overplay it for yourself, and you just like you 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 portray like I'm really trying. Yeah. But I think the non-trying life, the like effortless, no, like the effortless right? kind of just, I like it. And this is like what I'm feeling today. I like what I see. Yeah. Like it just works and you do that. You know what I mean? That's true. So I think that that kind of, you know, that's that's more like where I'm at right now. Because some days I'm wear my loose chinos or my loose sweats, you know, with a whatever sneaker. And then some days I'm like, I'll just throw on some jeans. You know what I mean? Like salvage denim, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I really like, I really like the... uh the workwear right now, man. Yeah, bro, I'm, I'm tough clean, on that. They're clean cutting everything. Like that cross between like workwear mm-hmm. and like uh, prep look. Yeah. The, the preppy uh, workwear look, which is crazy yeah. concept because they're like completely different. They're on, yeah, both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. And they're kind they of meeting in the middle. They mended it. Like yeah. They melted it really well. Yeah, man. I remember we used to get kind of clown, not clown, but like we would, like in middle school, I was like into Dickies and stuff. And then like, I feel like, now it's normal if you want to rock a Dickies button up and yeah. you're not a cholo, you're not a, you're not using it as workwear. Like you can just wear it. And so, and they're, they're affordable. You know, you can cop a Dickies top and pants at Walmart if you really wanted yeah, to. Yeah. You know it's I mean? made well. Yeah. That stuff will last, bro. Yeah. Like it's, it's literally workwear. You got Red Cap, you got Dickies, you got, you know, BD, Ben Davis, you got, you know, it's all those. Yeah. Yeah, I even be sometimes I score on like Cintas, bro. What? Like I'll be at the thrift store. Cintas pants. And shit. Said, yeah, man. And you know that's built. That's like legitimate workwear, like factories, yeah. mechanics. And I'm like, yo, this is brand new. Still got this. I got like five Cintas <laughs> pants from work, bro. They it has us, the barcode yeah. for dry cleaning, right? Yeah, yeah bro, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, about that. I'm, I'm really enjoying like uh, it's, where it's at. Yeah, right now, right now because yeah. like everyone has a, a avenue for it. Regardless of size uh, or color, I got one for you. So you asked me of crop tops and stuff. Would you go around wearing crop sleeves? Nah, <laughs> I have before, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. I have before, but right I like now. in the one. I like it where it kind of cuts off uh, before your elbow. Does that make sense? Okay, like so the, not, not nah, nah, like the kind of like a. It looks like a raglan. I don't know. You know how the raglan usually mm-hmm. has like the sleeve, but like if you look at the Kanye, like uh, the Yeezy drop right now, they mm-hmm. have like the shirt that's like right at like right here. Oh, okay. right here. So it's like a quarter sleeve. Like quarter sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of like what we used to wear in football, like underneath your. Pants. Yeah, exactly. it was like a gym. It's funny because in football we had to wear a gray crop top quarter sleeve shirt underneath your pad yeah so literally it was like right here and then it was right by your belly button yeah exactly that shit was hot i was that was a hot look i was like bro that shit that's like straight 80s bro yeah like and i saw that some dudes are starting or maybe they're not starting but i have seen people wearing jerseys yeah but no shirt underneath. yeah or like they're they're like tucking their jersey so they're showing their their like uh stomach and shit yeah bro I'm like, man, I'm good. No, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, y'all can have that. Like, yeah. I won't try to force. Here's a question I'm gonna ask you, man, for the viewers too. Is like, what do you consider like young, like something that you're not, you like it's it's past you, like young generation fashion that you're not willing to do. I mean, I guess kind of what we said, like with the trends, but then you do see older guys are in our age range who do do that, like yeah. crops, crop button ups, Cuban shirts, Cuban button ups. Like, I get it, 
like cigar lounge type shirts, you know. Yeah. With the, I like that shit though. Yeah, I, I just copped one, you know, from the thrift yeah. store for like four ninety nine. You know, it's like the brand is like Q, Cubana. You know, yeah. it's like a Cuban. That's you know, fire. It was like four dollars, bro. But like stuff that the kids are wearing. I mean, I'm not around a bunch of kids to begin with, but like I do see stuff, man. I'm just like, nah, man. That's I'm too old. I I I don't know. I feel like. Me personally, I'm spotlighting a lot of the plus size mm-hmm. uh, streetwear or yeah. like fashion fashionistas per se yeah. on on social media. I don't know anyone Gen Z yeah. pretty much that's that true. just like that we don't have, pay attention to it enough. Man, most of the time when I see Gen Z, they're like hella skinny or like hella young looking. I mean, obviously, Irish, hella yeah, yeah, like big hair, yeah, big hair. Man, fuck man, that. Fuck that. I wish I had. I'm big sorry, hair, I'm though. not trying to cuss, man, but for real, as a barber who sees like trends and people bring looks to me and stuff, and they're like, can you do this? You know, most of the time I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? But like, I can't stand, and I'm saying this for real. I can't stand the, the Edgar. Yeah, dude. I'm glad my clientele isn't that. They're yeah. not asking for that, but I like when they come in. As a barber, I should be like, yeah, whatever you want. Like, if you're the customer, you're paying for it. If I can do it, I'm going to do it. But, man, like, miss me with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, don't bring that shit to me, man, because I don't like doing it. Yeah. I don't like it. I hate that style. I hate The blowout look. The blow. Like, I just, yeah, bro. And it's like, Rosie O'Donnell, like, the, you know, can I speak to the manager, how they yeah. want it, like, like quiffed and, like, yeah, bro. Not to go off on a tangent, but that's just not my thing, man. Like, I'd rather give you a gentleman's cut, business cut. A blowout fade, you know, tapers, high fades, low fades, you know, yeah. versus that trendy. Because I always wonder. What like, about the pestle pluma? You down with that cut? I've done a couple, like, skullets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's cool for for what it is right now. I don't know how long it's going to last yeah. or how long it's going to, like, stay valid. But, um, I mean, it's it's all fashion, bro. This, this stuff goes in a circle. It's just, I don't like it. And I always wonder when these people have these haircuts. Like, you see a gang of little Edgars, right? They all drive like G35s or whatever with paper plates. And they're like walking in the mall in the store. I'm like, yo, what do you think you're going to lo- When you look back at this, will you be like embarrassed or like kind of just like cringy? Because when I see my hair from back in the day, right? Yeah, when the spikes. Uh, spikes, like the Asian style, right? Spikes, blonde, bangs, tail, fade, you know? I mean, I'm not like cringed out because it was funny and it's fun. But I'm just like, damn, we were really like putting L.A. looks in our hair, depth oh. gel, bro, Try, sun in to kind of lighten up the hair. It makes you question uh, the people that always had the timeless cut. Like, damn, were they, were we sleep? Yeah, they, they kept were the always, same haircut. They were always, and then now it's just a lot cleaner now. It's just a yeah, cleaner look. Exactly. I'm like, damn. I don't even remember. I did the spiky here with the LA looks for oh, sure. Oh, for sure, dog. I was like, bro, I, which kind of doesn't make sense because in Houston, it, you're, I remember one of my uh, aunties or titas were like, "Oi, you're perspiring, man! I'm like, drip, that sweat was dripping with the LA looks in my eyes. Like, bro, it's like stinging, stinging, and, bro. stinging in in new levels, bro. Yeah, man. I remember, dude, like cutting my own hair because I get asked that a lot. I was like, do you cut your own hair? I'm like, no, I don't. Like, I'll trim my beard and stuff. I haven't done it, but I'll trim my beard, line it up. But as far as fading, I used to start. I used to fade my own hair." throughout middle school because i would tell my mom too late yeah that i needed a haircut for picture day and it was like they're closed so you gotta figure it out okay so i'd be upstairs just trying you know what i'm saying yeah and i'm just thinking what the heck did i look like bro like <laughs> like the sides and the stuff was cool like for the picture but dog the back the back had to be crazy like Damn. the back had to be bad. i would just go by touch i'm like oh yeah, I'd be like, oh, okay, it's, it's, you know, so now I want to know what people, they were probably like, the heck is wrong with the back of it? <laughs> now they got the whole, like, uh, at-home barbecue yeah. with the mirrors. The three-mirror like system. Yeah. But if you get turned around, when you look at that, I get dyslexic. I'm like, wait, which you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, which side, you know? Yeah. My brother used to cut my hair back in the day, That's bro. tight, man. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that was, where, where do you get your hair cut now? I'm not gonna tell nobody, bro. It, <laughs> but it's like, in, do you do it in the city or like? Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I go. I have a couple people that I I try to like spread out. Do they know you cut too? I always save that information later. The right? end. Yeah, but um, I do tell them because um, they ask me, "What do you do?" You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, I cut hair, and they're yeah. like, "Really? You don't cut your own hair?" I'm like, "Nah, man. Like, I'd like to." Relax too, you know. Like, oh yeah, that's true, bro. You want to feel like like you want somebody to cook you some 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 bomb food Hell too yeah. sometimes, right? You go to restaurants, you're like, man, I don't feel like 
just just take care of me. Hell yeah. No, but yeah, I got a couple dudes, man. Um, I forget his name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 my bad. I got a roster of dudes. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Well, barbers and people that do hair. Yeah. I kind of just go wherever I can go, to be honest. And it's just because my schedule kind of like it's conflicting with yeah, their availability. A lot of times you work on the days they work. They're working. And Monday and Sunday. No one really works yeah, on Monday they're Sunday off, unless they have know? an appointment. Mm-hmm. Exactly, man. So I kind of look to see who's open. Yeah. But yeah, dog. So uh, what do you think about like, uh, is there anything you've been listening to lately that's been like on um, your mind, bro? More no. so like in rotation? You always hit me with these, dog. And I'm like, I'm always, during the week when I'm driving, I'm like, this is a good song. I got to remember to talk about this just in case I get asked what's on my playlist. <laughs> and then I don't because it jumps so much, like my playlist. I remember you were on drum and bass for so long. Yeah, I was like, drum and bass, you know, some 80 vocal. 80 City, uh, yeah. J City Pop. Yeah, dude. Um, I kind of gave that a break because I felt like it was just on a loop. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I got to step away from this, man. Um, uh, Dog. I can't tell you. I really... Yeah, I'm like all over the place, one mentally. So like my mood is like highly dependent on what I feel like listening to, and sometimes like this song, a random song by an artist that I don't even know will pop, and I'm like, this is good. Yeah, like this suits my mood. Like I'm feeling this heavy, and I'll just play it. Man, what about you? I've been listening to ever since last year this dude named Tommy Richmond. Okay, his EP is only like five songs, but there's That's this the one song bro. called like. Uh, Glock 25, bro. <laughs> Dude, that shit goes so hard. It's it? not, it's R&B. Oh, dope. Like, okay. alternative R&B. But yeah. he's like, he was on Brent Fiaz's album, like, uh-huh. recently. But he, it's super poppy. Not poppy, but, like, it has that it's sound. like that 90s medley vibe. Yeah, yeah. It's sick. I mean, I I think it was in my, like, top five songs last year. But uh-huh. I, I just replayed it again on the way nice. here. I was like, man, this shit still goes hard. Bro. I love that feeling, man. When you find something dope and you play it out for yourself. And you're like, I'm not going to jam this right now. And you revisit it six months later. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, that's why I really like the replay of like 20 of the, oh, the years. recaps and stuff? The recaps. Yeah. Like, I'm on that 29. I still listen to my 2019 shit when I got Apple Music. I'm yeah. like, bro. Yeah. Apple Music or Spotify, though? For me, bro, by default, I'm on, I'm on Apple Music. Okay, me too. Are you? Yeah. I'm I thought you were a Spotify guy. Nah, bro. I what? Could, which is crazy because it's more like uh, curate. It's way more curator friendly. Yeah. For Spotify, uh-huh. whereas like for Apple Music, I'm just on it because of UI and like aesthetic. Yes. For the app itself. And I, my buddy told me the quality of music is like they offer it in a like, lossless. Yeah, like the quality is like really like intended to be listened to the way it was put out. Like yeah, they really work on getting that. The optimal track sound. Yeah, they do actually. Kind of like this podcast, right? Yeah. No, for real. Our shout quality, out to Jeru. Shout out to my boy. Is really good, dude. Um, for those of y'all that don't know, my my dude over here, he um, on the fly is learning as he goes, man. So he's he's been working on the computer, learning how to edit, get it down. So it just goes to show you, you know, it's never you, too late. It's to never learn, too late. Bro. There's something new for you to learn, to get good at, to to be profound at, like living proof, man. So. Yeah, make sure you guys... Uh, Damn, I wish I could edit more and have a stronger computer. Yeah. It's just like, even on Reels or TikTok, they'll be like, hey, <laughs> I just started coding six months ago. Now I'm making 120000 Yeah, man. I'd be like, man, fuck this. I'm about to code right now. They're bro. like, I use this piece of bread and this butter knife to edit this video, and yeah. now I'm making 100000 No, for real. Yeah, That's man. why I, I remember graduating from school and... Thinking, damn, I have a classmate that's like seventy five years old, bro. Shoot, just because they wanted to have continual, yeah. continuous learning, like that's that's it's it's straight props. Because a lot of times, bro, you, whoa, yeah. dude, a lot of times you'll just cap out. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you don't ever want to like do that. That's true, man. I think continuing education is is legitimately. I mean, it's not always necessary, but um, I think if you have the option, do it so that you can level up. Yeah, you should do it. You know, I, I I'm not I don't know. I'm kind of caught. I think if you're the type of person that can handle it too, if uh-huh. you can go back to school and like knock it out for a year, and then you get a position where you're offered X amount, you know, like mm-hmm. significantly more, then yeah, go for it, man. But if it's like a lateral move, where they're like, regardless if you get another degree or whatever, like, but we can't like bump you up, I'd be like, man, you know what? Let's just dial it back and just continue. Yeah, 
refining yourself. Yeah. If he can, yeah, that's why I'm saying, like, if he can refine yourself in any avenue, mm -hmm. regardless if it's taking a new path or like yeah. forging the same path, mm -hmm. you have to do it for yourself. Yeah, man. It's, it's hard. I mean, a lot of the times on a, I'm not going to say a philosophical standpoint, it's like <laughs> Confucius. Yeah, <laughs> Confucius says, bro. Man. You really have to, um, their complacency is is a, a killer to oneself, man. Yeah, damn, that's a struggle, bro. Yeah, like, waking up and saying to yourself that I need to do more, or what can I do more of in my field to help me? Yeah, you know, outside of the field too. Because oh yeah, lot, in life, a man. lot of the times, man, I'll like. Uh, you might have everything you want and need. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that caps out at what you really could get. Like potentially. Yeah, potentially yeah. you could be getting more. And then people always have like this uh, opinion of like, you're being greedy. You know what I mean? Nah. I but mean, you take what can be taken, right? Yeah. Are yeah. you Or are you just going to leave it on the shelf because someone, someone else says, could take it? Yeah. It's not a fucking... Uh, when you're walking around the neighborhood and there's a public, there's a library in the treehouse type shit. Yeah, yeah. You pick your book, be or kind take of a modest. book, leave a book. Yeah. yeah. Nah, bro. Take it if you can take it because it was there for you to take. To take, yeah, yeah, yeah. If man. it's attainable, man, it's, it's yours. That's true. I think sometimes in life, man, it sucks to admit, bro. It sucks to admit. Sometimes you just gotta be greedy. And it, man, yeah. yeah I could go. Imagine, I could go imagine, imagine you're at your peak as a individual as a human mm -hmm. and you have everything you want to need your generous side is always going to give back yeah you can give back to your community your you can time, give back to yeah. your family you give yeah. back with your time mm -hmm. but when it really comes down to it you only are re only are given the chance to give back because you are taking at an x period of time yeah, yeah. like for me i'm like I'm not at a point yet where I can give back the way that you want to. Yeah, yeah. the way that I want to. And that's yeah. not an excuse. It's more so like I'm not going to fucking donate a quarter if <laughs> I could work a little more and throw in a, $5 throw in like, or yeah. like pay for. I remember telling my cousin in the Philippines, like, hey, yo, just wait on it. I'm, a, we'll come I'm up. really going to come up so that I can pay for your kid's college degree type shit. Yeah. And like in the Philippines, that's super easy. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? College isn't that expensive out there. So it was like, it was doable, but now I'm like, nah, I still got to grind a little yeah. more. <laughs> like, hold off on that. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't. Yeah, don't no. get older yet. <laughs> Take it's a hold like, on It's like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, man, dude. That's funny. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what's a, what's a segue we can have right now, bro? That's... Doug, I mean, I hate, I don't want to piggyback off that tipping. I mean, just so that you guys go back to the first, the first episode, episode. go ahead and watch that man we had a really fun time talking about the tipping culture and that's all we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that because um it's it's, it's like this past saturday it was a topic amongst a group of people that i was in for the birthday party that i just happened to overhear at the other end of the table talking about tipping and i just said hey man i plugged the show in i was like y'all should watch it because we kind of expressed a brief brief because we could go deep into that but we we expressed a brief segment over the tipping culture and so i don't want to bring that into this next episode we definitely want you to go back and watch that um man is salad good bro is what's your type of salad bro if you go to i'm i don't know a steak place a, a restaurant my favorite salad is a caesar salad dang keeping it classic caesar salad yeah or a crispy rice salad bro Okay. You ever had a crispy rice salad? I don't know. Like, it's kind of like, you know how that texture of uh, rice krispies? You no, know, like Thai people do it. Oh, like, uh, like oh, is it white? Yeah, it's not. It's not white, but it's an actual salad. It's kind of oh. like a cold fried rice. Oh, okay. I, I oh, remember, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah yes, it's like, yes. I know and then mean. I forgot the term for it or the name of it, but that shit is so gas, bro. Or like oh. even the. Uh, like the papaya salad. I was about bro. to say papaya salad, bro. Jeez. I go ham on man. I want Thai food. Dog. Yeah, papaya Damn. salad just goes so hard. Man. It, I could, yeah, it's good. And I, I know like the people that are, grew up with that in their culture is like, man, I'm so used to that shit. But yeah, I like what? it, bro. Like it's good. There's nothing. I, I, I couldn't imagine growing up and thinking I'm gonna get tired of this shit, bro. I don't uh -huh. ever get tired of papaya salad. Lately, bro, I've been on arugula heavy. Yeah. Do you like it? I, 
I like arugula. Yeah, I like the peanut taste. Like, no, I will have it as a side yeah. with my food because I will just keep eating it. I like that flavor profile. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a, a bitter bite of, like, crunch. <laughs> <laughs> like a butternut. Yeah. I don't know, man. Dude, do you eat um, Hot Pot? Yeah, I have a, I've had hot are pot. You, are you a big fan? or? There's some concept that I really like. I like Shabu, uh, Shabu, Shabu, like Shabu Sh- Squared. Oh, okay. I was just there. Did yeah. I, I was there like a couple days ago. That shit goes hard, dude. Yeah, man. Shout out to Shabu Squared, man. It's, um, but this time we did the uh, Ace, All You Can Eat or whatever. Yeah. And we did like the the Wagyu, like the, oh, the top, the tier, top one? tier one. Worth? Yeah. The meat. Damn. It melts, bro. I used to work there, bro. No, you didn't. I swear. Shabu During Square? COVID. With what's his name? The owner? Leon. Um, Leon. Yeah. He's cool with uh, Lung, the owner at 93. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, I used I... to. But then, like, uh, on a personal note, my my pops got COVID. Yeah. Almost died, right? So, so you I bounced? was like, you had to bounce. Was it cool, I though? I kind of ghosted, though. Oh, damn. But then I hit him up, like, recently. I was like, yo, I'm sorry, bro. I apologize. You know, my pops is good. X, this and that. But yeah. It comes to show that you just got to be clear about communication yeah. and following up because you don't want to burn a bridge, bro. Yeah, man. Dang. How long <clears throat> were you there, though? Probably like two, three months. Okay. Um, Then you knew the manager. Uh, She's a female. That's Cece's cousin. Nah. I I probably met her. Yeah. I, my homie is uh, the one that kind of curated the menu tea, oh. the Cambodian dude. Okay. Yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah, I like it. The the meat, you know, it, it melts, bro. You swish it around, and they got the peanut sauce, the um, the cold dipping sauce. It was good. Damn, like, I, I just like, remember how to make that peanut sauce. You do? Yeah, the sesame. Is- yeah, I like. Excuse me, I like the squash. Yeah, the vegetable plate. I eat it with the peel because it gets so soft. Yeah. I'm not gonna sit there and dissect. I just eat it. It's yeah. all. I think that's where the fibers at. <laughs> no, nah, for real. It's just like when you eat an apple, you're not supposed to peel the apple. Yeah, all the good. The nutrients that yeah. you want is in the in the skin. Yeah, dog. That's or like, tight. Yeah, I think uh, that's a good spot right there. I really like. Uh, I forgot. I can't even pronounce the name, but they can do like hot pot, but with skewers inside. You put like the skewers inside oh. the hot pot, and then it cooks the meat or whatever veggies you have. I like that one. That's the one in, on uh, that one and Shabu Square are probably my favorite too. Okay. It has like a, it's in the tap house uh, complex. Got you. I don't know which one it is. <clears throat> I feel like I'm so slept on a lot of food. Like I obviously love food. Hello. But yeah. like when it comes to like places, I've been to a lot of places, but I just don't, I just don't feel like I can talk about them. Not, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't, it's not like instilled into me to where I'm just like, oh, I know this place and I can tell you about it i don't know it's weird like nah, how bro, you it, can pick those restaurants and be like yeah i've ate there i've eaten there but i guess it's because you know you're in that that's that's your thing like you know you like to try different things you know yeah but saying? the thing is right now it's just like culinary overload bro There's okay like, okay imagine all the countries in the world and you're having to dissect every <laughs> every cuisine from that country or even yeah. that province from one country and it's like how can you do it bro it's it's it's, it's kind of impossible time. there's not enough time or you're you're just you're skimming through, like, yeah, surface level, right? Yeah. Now, have you, yeah, I don't know, I was going to say another restaurant, but I'm just like, nah, man, you know what? Because I remember, I didn't know Hot Pot was a thing until, but because when we used to go to Tan Tan, oh, yeah, you would hang the little shrimp off the edge of the, mm-hmm. of the I'm like, that's, like is that technically Hot Pot, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the same thing. Same thing as like dipping your meat in the broth instead of <laughs> letting it sit. A lot of times when the motherfucker would just throw all the meat in the broth and yeah. just like eat yeah. it raw, but you're supposed to like twirl that shit inside. Yeah, yeah. Twirl that shit inside. Because that's broth. what shabu means, a swish, right? It's a yeah. swish, swish or whatever. Okay. That's yeah. the best way, bro, because you get it like at the perfect optimal temperature. The first know? time I ever had shabu was like in um in California. Yeah. And I didn't know oh, what it was. they take it serious out there. Yeah, dude. I didn't know what it was, bro. Like my homie's like, yo, I was there for a clothing show or whatever and- he was like, let's go eat after we set up. Let's go eat. And I was like, okay. So we went to Shabu something. And I was just like, what? What the fuck? You know, what do I do? And he put like the salt on the meat. like Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The sea salt or whatever. Yeah. The crystal. I was like, this is good. Yeah. You know? Damn, the Maldon salt, bro. <laughs> salt lamp. Are you licking yeah. or no? <laughs> yeah, I'm licking. <laughs> Damn, Give me all dude. the salt, bro. Dude. I think a, a lot of times, man, you just... 
you just have to appreciate the approach. And mm-hmm. I'm going to segue that. Yeah. What do you think about the toxic culture when it comes to like our country? Like oh. the toxic culture that you, you kind of appreciate that you kind of was like in the normal things. Give me an example. Like, so I can overly, of- overly, uh, like no filter when it comes to like your appearance, like as a Filipino. I mean, a lot of cultures do that, but then like they'll describe someone based on like what they're what they're wearing or how they look, or even like toxic toxic culture. Uh huh. So like, are we talking about like people that are? Would it be like the association of every Filipino like being a, a nurse? Like yeah, like the stereotypes or like <laughs> yeah, yeah, or like oh you're getting too fat yeah, or like yeah, yeah, oh look at you you're not that. oh those toxic yeah yeah, yeah. or like do you, are you married do yeah. you have a boyfriend when yeah. you're gonna have kids yeah the inappropriate uncle that yeah Instagram uh, you're borderline Kyle pervert you yeah. know I'm yeah. like bro what was your favorite one that was normal that was a norm in the in your household in my household. Not in your household, but obviously just when growing you do a party, up, something like, what you was some see? shit you exposed to? Oh, man. Probably like, yeah, I guess growing up, you know, you got a girlfriend. Yeah. You know, like, you, yeah. You, you know, you got a girlfriend or like, um, yeah, like, I think, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go off that one. This is like, it's weird. They always ask you. Yeah. Oh, I have a girlfriend. You have a girlfriend now? You know, like. I don't know. Even oh, as oh, you have a girlfriend. Now? Yeah, we're gonna get married, or, or you got to go to school. You have to be yeah. a doctor. You have to be a nurse. I'd be like, man. I'm like, man. I can't stand the sight, the sight of the inside of the body. I can't be a nurse. Yeah. No. Uh, what about you? Like, what's the toxic trait in the culture that was normalized? I like the uh, my favorite <laughs> one growing up was a. Uh, you must eat everything. Yeah, eat yeah. everything, and also. Man, you're gaining weight <laughs> because I told you to. I'm like, yeah, man, but you of- told me to eat everything. Damn. And then you. Talk- <laughs> I mean, that's a cliche thing nowadays, bro. It's yeah. definitely been spotlighted, but it's like, damn, bro. It just came upon like how quick someone can switch up on you when they're trying to be. Uh, like, you fatten me up, yeah, and now you're saying I'm too fat. Yeah, just yeah, like- just stabbing you in the <laughs> chest, bro. Man. Stomach fed yeah. though. They're like, oh, you need to eat. You remember that video? It's like, I-, I was told to finish all my food so I'll be big and strong. Yeah. And now I'm just big. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's real life, bro. Man. What's something that you ate as a kid that wasn't necessarily like normal for like other, whether it be culture, culturally different or Plus, just. <laughs> no, but you yeah. remember, you remember a Kanye. Oh, anyways, you know, let's talk about that. My. Let me go ahead and finish that. Bro. No, no, no just like I'm thinking, like what something you ate that was not necessarily normal for like kids. Yeah, kids. Like, not by Ethan, bro. Oh shit, dude. Like just innard soup. Oh man, that's wild. Yeah. I I couldn't even. Didn't do it go that. on. Was actually crazy when you think about it. I didn't eat that. I I tried it as a kid until someone told me what it was and that yeah. ruined me. So I never touched that. To this day, as an adult, I won't even eat it. Bro. Even menudo, bro. I don't. I'm scared of people's menudo, bro. If it has like liver. Yeah, and I know that. Oh, usually like, it's just tripe, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. menudo, like the Mexican menudo. Oh, Mexican menudo. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, but for me, it was a weird thing is not even like cooked. I remember I was getting, I used to get babysat by this older Filipino lady, and you know them big ass one gallon jugs of juice from yeah. like the generic store, like like it'd be orange or yeah. red, the, purple, the, just straight sugar color and water. Great retail. Uh, yeah. Great value. Great value. Uh, so she would have that, but it was like orange. Not like orange juice, and she would pour it in a um, in a cup or a bowl, <laughs> and then she would give me bread, and I would take the white bread and I would dip it on both sides, and then I would just eat it, bro. I'm like, and so the juice would come out of the bread. What the hell? So is I would. Going on it was like right sweet now. orange bread, bro. I don't know. I know that's weird, but that's more so along the lines of like, what was something that normal people? And I'm sure some people listening, I'd be like, yeah, I used to dip my bread in the juice and drink it, you know, nah, and eat nah, it. I'm normal. Now I think about my shit was kind of normal <laughs> growing up as a dip. That was just like when my homie, white bread. Bro. My homie pulled up one time and put sugar and butter and white rice out the 
white sugar people. butter. That's some white people shit. I is mean, he, I, that's rude with me to say, but that's like I've heard. That's the nah. Country he was shit. a brother though. Oh, he was. <laughs> yeah, that's some country stuff though. I feel right. Like. A lot of people can relate to that, like being in the south. I think too. He is, he 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 pretty much prepped it up like it was some grits grits or, or like. Yeah. First of all, I remember we were getting roasted because like I was like, yeah, I'm about to put some sugar in my grits, and that's uncalled for in the south, bro. You should just I just like grits salt and sugar. butter. Yeah, do you like? I grew up thinking that's how you're supposed to do it. Nah, my bro. mom, my mom would put sugar in it, and I, I would eat it because we would eat it kind of like oatmeal or like champurado. Yeah, <laughs> bro, I remember getting called out for it from my like chef from New Orleans. He was like, "Hey, John, ain't no fucking sugar in grits, dog." And Man. I was like, "Hey, fam, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone." <laughs> yeah, that's funny, dog. Yeah, Dang, sugar on your grits. That Man. was it, man. I was, yeah, that was probably the. Highlight of my childhood, bro. Just eating innards and dinner go on. Yeah, but you you grew up, you know, culture, bro. Yeah. That's maybe why I don't like it because I wasn't forced to eat it. But I'm also weird when it comes to like the way you don't like cheese. For those of you that don't know, my boy detests cheese. He does not like cheese. I'm not like cheese, bro. I'm done with that. Sh- that's and for, not good for me, for me, it's like stuff that's not regular meat. <laughs> on the on the food like proteins i don't eat it liver yeah i don't eat liver i don't eat like tripe i don't do like pork che- oh you know cow cheek i know that's kind of whack because it is kind of good I've had yeah it. what, what? you don't eat cheek what is it called barbacoa yeah barbacoa like because i just yeah bro i don't i know it's good because i have had it yeah. but i'm like i just my mind is too much bro i'm like Mm-mm. yeah what about hamachi kama what's that like fish collar uh, I don't. They got a collar. Yeah, fish collar. Is it like right behind the head? Yeah. Like, I mean, I eat it. I guess. Nah, it's the same concept, bro. I think of the cheek, bro. I think of it like my French bulldog's cheek. That's the best part. Man. I didn't want to think about it nah, that way, dude. but yeah, that's what I think of, bro. I think dude, of my dog's cheeks. My kadeka there, sinigang. Most sometimes, if I'm doing beef, it's beef cheek, bro. Yeah, see, you don't even have to tell. I know it's good. I probably will still eat it because you can cook, and I yeah. wouldn't even know you if you lied to me and said, "Yeah, bro, it's just regular." Is it the gelatinous beef. feel of it? No, I think it's more mentally me knowing that it's, it's a cheek. cheek. It's a part of the body, though. Yeah, pork ear in your um, what's the sea cig or whatever yeah. they eat. I don't even eat that, bro. You don't eat, you you don't eat puto though, right? I eat puto with no cheese. With no cheese, that's what I was about to say. Only yeah. without the cheese. I'm peeling thing. the cheese off, bro. I remember uh, my Ninang at the time, my godmother would like cook really good uh, puto. Puto, or she would order it and she yeah. like, Anak, I got you puto with no cheese. Dang, she or, like knew. she would be like, I got you the empanada with no cheese. Anak. Dang. I was like, let's fucking go. Empanadas, dog. I love that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. So I think that um, we pretty much. Covered some bases, dog. We got some some solid yeah. stuff in there. Gave you a glimpse of some of some more insight, man. So slowly as our episodes evolve, we kind of want to keep you guys interested in what we are and who we are as people and what we think and what we find funny. Yeah, and we're just spotlighting what we yeah. experience. And at the same time, like we will have guests coming in yeah. so that we get more insight on where we're from and who we are, yep. just like he said. And I think I'm excited for the journey, and we're doing this because it's a sense of creative, and we never yeah. want to sub- subside any of our creative roots and who yeah. we are as a person. And we got to keep it going. Definitely. Yeah, but thank y'all so much, guys. Episode two, two. we're out. Peace. Peace.